I am BJ at Seoul National University. In the previous video, I discussed the delusion in the concept of convergence and limit by showing a flaw in the proof of the proposition that the limit of a converging sequence is unique. In this video, I show a delusion in limit 1 over n equals 0. In the current theory, limit 1 over n equals 0 by the concept of convergence and limit. Proof is like this. Consider an arbitrary small epsilon larger than 0. For any arbitrarily small epsilon larger than 0, there is capital N such that capital N is larger than 1 over epsilon by Archimedean property of real numbers. Archimedean property is one of the expression that real number is infinite, and you may look it up in the textbook. Then, for all n larger than capital N, absolute value of 1 over n minus 0, which is 1 over n, is smaller than 1 over capital N, which is smaller than epsilon. Then, 1 over n equals 0. This can be shortened like this. And this conclusion is based on if absolute value of x minus x prime is smaller than epsilon, then x equals x prime in the proof of the proposition that the limit of a converging sequence is unique. However, the proof was shown to be flawed as in the previous video. Therefore, we cannot conclude from absolute value of 1 over n minus 0 is smaller than epsilon to 1 over n equals 0. Let's start with definition of length. The length of an open or closed interval a and b of real numbers is defined as absolute value of b minus a. If b is not equal to a, then the length is larger than 0. If b equals a, then the length is 0. A point or a single number has a length of 0. This definition of length is consistent with our intuition and Euclidean geometry. There should be no ifs and buts, and I hope you stick to this definition to the end of the discussion. Cantor set is defined as the limiting set of iteratively deleting the open middle third from the interval 0 and 1. This iterative deletion is of n approaching infinity when n is a natural number. Wikipedia is a good reading material with many good references. In the current theory, the length of Cantor set is calculated as zero by the concept of convergence and limit. Method one is like this. The length of Cantor set is limit 2 over 3 powered by n. For any arbitrary small epsilon larger than 0, there is capital N satisfying epsilon is larger than 2 over 3 powered by n for every n larger than capital N. And then, for any arbitrary small epsilon larger than 0, and for all n larger than n, absolute value of 2 over 3 powered by n minus 0 is smaller than epsilon. Thus, limit 2 over 3 powered by n equals 0. This again is based on the flawed proof that if absolute value of x minus x prime is smaller than epsilon, then x equals x prime. There's method 2. Counter set is the segment 
remained after successive removal of the middle one-third. Thus, length of counter set is total length minus total length removed. The total length removed is the sum of the geometric uh, progression, like this. Thus, the length of counter set is 1 minus 1 equals 0. However, this requires limit 2 over 3 power by n equals 0. Thus, method 1 and 2 are the same. I show the length of the individual segment of contour set is larger than 0. Contour set in the base 3 number system is deleting the segment with last digit 1 on the left and 2 on the right. Because we are always deleting the segment with last digits 1 on the left and 2 on the right, the last digit 4 to factor last digit of the right endpoint number and left endpoint number of each interval are always either 0 and 1 or 2 and 0 and are never the same. Examples of the last digit are like this. These last digits are followed by infinite iteration of zeros, thus may not be considered as the last digits. However, in subtraction or in other arithmetic, these digits are the ones that matters. Therefore, I call this as de facto last digit. It is to be noted that n, the length of the digit, is 3 here in step 3 as underlined and is very long in counter set. Someone may bring up a number like this. I'll discuss a number like this in later because it will show a very interesting delusion in current math. Because a last digit or de facto last digit of the right endpoint number and left endpoint number of each segment are never the same, left endpoint number is not equal to left endpoint number for all n. Thus, absolute value of right endpoint number minus left endpoint number is larger than zero for all n. The length of each segment after nth step in generating counter set is 1 over 3 powered by n, which is larger than 0 for all n. The length of each segment in counter set is limit 1 over 3 powered by n. Assume Limit 1 over 3 powered by n equals 0. If we are not to double speak, or if we want to be consistent, limit 1 over 3 powered by n equals 0 dictates 1 over 3 powered by n equals 0 for some n, because n is for n in natural numbers in limit 1 over 3 powered by n. Thus, the assumption limit 1 over, n, 1 over 3 powered by n equals 0 contradicts 1 over 3 powered by n is larger than 0 for all n. Thus, limit 1 over 3 powered by n is larger than 0. Limit 1 over n is larger than or equal to limit 1 over 3 powered by n, which is larger than 0. Thus, limit 1 over n is larger than 0. Limit 1 over n is larger than 0. Thus, cast doubts on the proposition 
that the limit of a converging sequence is unique. And in the next video, I'll show an counterexample of the proposition that the limit of a converging sequence is unique, thus show that proposition itself is flawed. Please send critical comments to this address. Thank you very much.